What's up, YouTube? Sean Elvis here. Got a beautiful day here in Denver, Colorado. Not a cloud in the sky, no chemtrails. So I came out here to do the video for you guys. Anyways, um, just before I get into the video, I just wanted to say, you know, a lot of guys, you know, society tends to put single men, you know, it gives them a stigma, you know, like, and the reason why, you know, you know, because women will come up to me and ask me, why aren't you with somebody? Why aren't you married? You know, and, and you know, you, you kind of feel bad, but the honest answer is because there's no good women out here. There really isn't, you know, a bunch of wicked women out here. And that's the truth, you know, but, you know, the Bible says that it's better to dwell in the wilderness than with an angry and contentious woman. So... I mean, and that's in the wilderness, all by yourself, out of, away from civilization. So, you know, you can quickly, easily see why so many men are going MGTOW, going their own way, because these women out here, they ain't trying to help us. They ain't in their proper role, you know. They're feminists. They think they can go out and uh, make money on their own. But, you know, that's a different video. I just, I just wanted to get that off my chest real quick. Anyway, into the video. I'm going to start today with a reading um, from the letter from St. Paul to the Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 10 says, Therefore I take, you know, and I'm not going to read the backstory on this. You can go read it yourself if you read uh, chapter 12. But chapter 12, verse 10 says, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I'm, for when I am weak, then I'm, then am I strong. The word of the Lord. You know, today I want to talk about strength. I want to talk about strength. What does it mean to be strong? You know. Um. I was at the hospital the other day, you know, and, and when, sorry, I'm sorry, it's kind of windy. I was at the hospital the other day and they asked me, or they didn't ask me, but you know, they asked the person I was with, how much pain are you in, you know, on a scale from one to 10? You know, and, and you know, 10 being the highest, one being the lowest, so I, I want to ask you guys, you know, how, how strong are you? How tough are you? How much pain can you withstand? How much pain can you administer to the enemy? You know, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and he was telling me about how his life and, and his situation in his life, that he was telling me about all of these people who were mistreating him and how they were mistreating him and, and how he was angry about it. And you know, some of the times I was telling them, yeah, you're very righteous to have that anger. That was, they're mistreating you. And he was explaining how he was getting back at them, you know, and, and, and what he told them and, and how he was reacting and responding to what they did to him and what they said to him. And they were trying to bring him down, you know, and boss him around and this and that and tell him what to do. And, and I was kind of thinking and relating this to how YouTube is banning our channels, you know, banning the MGTOW channels and shadow banning our videos and demonetizing them and things like that. So how do we respond when the enemy attacks us, you know? And the advice I gave to my friend was this, I said, what if I told you that to really hurt the enemy, to truly destroy them? You have to attack them with love and love them. Be kind to them. Pray for them. Well, he didn't like, he didn't like this answer. Uh, he was arguing with me and telling me, no, 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 I need to, I need to, def I need to do things the way I'm doing. He wanted to destroy them with his power. He wanted to strike back with his strength and his intelligence and his quick wit. You know, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities 
against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, wickedness in high places. I want you guys to consider for a moment that you are not as strong as you think you are. You know? What do you do when you're surrounded by the enemy? When you're outnumbered, you're outgunned. And especially, how do you defeat an enemy who's your own friend? Who's your own relative, your own flesh and blood, your neighbor, somebody you grew up with, somebody you live with, somebody you see every day, you work with them. You know, the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So what if I told you that your true enemy is, is not flesh and blood, it's not another human being. But it's the ideology that this person believes in, you know? They're following Satan, they're following the devil. And basically they're believing lies, you know, the devil has them tricked into thinking that the truth is that, that the lie is actually the truth. You know, if you believed drinking alcohol and smoking drugs was good for you, you know, it, it would eventually destroy you. It would destroy your liver and, and you die, it would kill you. You know, in the same way, I can see men who think that it's okay to pump and dump women. It's okay to lash out at women and, 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 and mistreat them, you know, because they're angry and they're retaliating of what the women did to them, you know. And that's not to say that sometimes people shouldn't be rebuked for their bad behavior and, and their actions shouldn't be called out. And this person, you know, shouldn't be called out for their BS. But there is a difference between attacking somebody out of revenge and spite because they hurt you and, and, and trying to prove to them that you're right, you know, versus gently, lovingly, rebuking somebody in love and explaining to them how they can correct themselves and why they're wrong, you know? And I was thinking this morning, why is it that you can go watch some hardcore pornography, that you, th the hardest core pornography, any pornography that you can think of right there at, the, at your fingertips at the push of a button on your smartphone, all for free. It's all free. You don't have to pay for any of it. You mean I You mean I can't even download like the number one pop song right now? Like I can't go download the number one song for free. They're even going to charge me like at least a dollar, right? But I can go download any porn I want <laughs> or and, and and watch it, stream it for free. You know, there's a reason behind this. Because the devil knows that it's going to destroy you so you need to you need to be careful you know the devil's ways are easy but the lord's ways they take work they're a little difficult so how tough are you how strong are you he wants to convince you the devil does that no pornography is fine you know it's helping you it's helping you uh <laughs> relieve the pressure or whatever you want to say you know it's entertaining you Guys, it's not. The easy way is the way that leads to destruction most of the time, you know? And if you watch that stuff, if you if you walk around thinking, oh, I'm strong, I can resist women, but you know, it, it, when, you're, when you go home and you close the door, you're watching pornography, how strong really are you? Can you resist lusting after these women and their bodies? Can you resist the worldly lusts? You know? You can say you're strong, you can say you're resisting them, but really, can you? Are you? Have you turned off the porn yet? Have you cut that cancer out of your life yet? How strong are you? Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 says, For when I am weak, then I am strong. It's not until we realize how weak we are that we truly can become strong. Think about it. Nobody goes to the gym to work out thinking that they're strong. No. They go to the gym. The reason, the whole reason they get in the gym is so that they can strengthen their body because they realize they're weak and they need to be strengthened. They need to exercise. Think about it. 
It's the same reason why I go to church, why I read my Bible. Why do you think I read my Bible and go to church? You know, do you think it's because I'm smart? You think because I'm holy? No, I read my Bible because, not because, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's wise to read your Bible. But I don't read my Bible because I'm wise. I read my Bible because I know that I'm not wise and I need to get wise and I recognize I need to take the necessary steps in order to be wise. So when you're so proud that you think you know it all, when, you, when you're too proud to think that you can make it in this world without God, you think you know what's best, the best way to live your life, you know you're in control of your life. Friends, that's when you open yourself up for failure. That's when you can fall. Okay, the Bible says, take heed lest ye fall. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 says, take heed lest ye fall. The main problem I see with our society today, or one of the main problems is, whether it be a man or a woman, is nobody wants to admit that they're weak. You know, I, I, so often, you know, I compare my life and my situation with this, with this woman that I love, you know, my past relationship, the woman who broke up with me. You know, when she broke up with me, I asked her why. And I said, why? And she told me, you know, because if I stay with you, it means that I'm weak. She didn't want to admit that she was weak, you know, as, as if it would be a bad thing to admit that. And, you know, looking back, hindsight's twenty twenty. And I can see that, you know, she didn't want to admit that. So, you know, let me read a verse from the Bible for you. It says, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7 says, Likewise, ye husbands, d dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. You know, the Bible says women are the weaker vessel, you know. So for a woman to not admit that she's weak, she's the weaker one, she's lying to herself. She's denying the truth. She's believing lies. And she's opening herself up for failure. You know, I also want to read um, from the book of Matthew, chapter 26. Let me open up my Bible. Let me see if I could do this because it's really windy. But the wind's dying down, so this is perfect. Thank you, Lord, for keeping that wind at bay so I can read your word real quick. Uh, Matthew chapter 26. Oh, sorry, 26. A few more pages. 26, starting in verse number... Um, I lost my place. One second. I am sorry, guys. Matthew chapter 26, starting in verse 36, says... Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And he saith unto them, Disciples, sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to sorrowful and, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, Jesus says to his disciples, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed. So, you know, Jesus is telling him, hey, look, I'm really worried because, you know, he's about to get taken away and be crucified. So he's, he's scared and, he, and, he's, and he's sorrowful and, and all those, you know, emotions that go along with it. And he's telling his disciples, hey, just hang out here and wait for me while I go over there and pray on my own. And he said, and Jesus fell on his face and prayed, saying, "O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but Thou wilt." You know, we could see that Jesus didn't want to go through this. He was scared, but he said, "You know what? I'm willing to do things the hard way because it's the right way." And he's praying for strength. He's praying for God to give him strength. And he cometh unto his disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What could ye not watch me one, one hour? What could ye not watch with me one hour? 
He's saying, he, he went back to his disciples and he found them asleep. You know, he's like, I told you guys, just stay awake for one hour while I pray. And he, he went back and he found them asleep. So he says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So he went away again a second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were very heavy. And he left them and went, a and went away again and prayed a third time, saying the same words. So he keeps praying. Then cometh to his disciples again and saith to them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. So we see from this reading, you know, sometimes we hear what Jesus wants us to do. And we even believe it in our heart that it's the right thing to do. Hold on. I just wanted to pass the dog without... At these people <laughs> invading my video. Uh, um, but yeah, we can see that, you know, sometimes Jesus tells us what to do. And we believe it. We hear it. We understand it. But our flesh is so weak that we fall short and we can't do it. You know, we can see that the disciples couldn't even stay awake one hour with Jesus as he prayed, you know, and, and I remind you the disciples, I'm sure they tried their hardest to stay awake. They probably tried so hard, and but their flesh deceived them, you know, and that's not to give them an excuse. You know, he gave them a clear command to stay awake and wait for him while he prayed. And they, they couldn't do it. They fell short. And, you know, Jesus wouldn't command us to do the impossible. He, 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 he commanded them to do something difficult but not impossible, you know, just like God was commanding Jesus to do something difficult, you know, to sacrifice him li his life for us, to go to the cross for us. But it wasn't impossible, you know, so Jesus was praying for strength. So wh wh what's my point here? What if you don't believe that you're weak? What if you don't believe you should stay awake? What if you don't believe Jesus in the first place? You know, and this gets to the main point of my video, in most of these women out here, they don't want to admit that they're weak. They don't want to admit that they need a man. You know, they don't, that they need to submit to their husbands. And it's so sad that we have to watch them destroy themselves, destroy society, destroy families, because they don't want to admit that they're weak. You know, and I can sit here and speak about how women need to get back get back to their proper roles, get back to being submissive, get back to being in the kitchen. And, and, you know, I joke about that, but, you know, there's a lot of truth to that. And how women, you know, need to stop wearing these pants, especially these, these tight-fitting yoga pants, because it's basically symbolic of them wearing the pants in the family, you know, and, 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 and trying to symbolize that they're strong and independent, you know, I use, no, strong, independent woman, right? And, you know, I, I made a video a while back where I talked about that briefly and, and I proved out of the Bible how a real strong woman is a woman who wears a skirt, who wears a dress, who dresses modestly because she's showing on the outside of her appearance what she believes in her heart, that she is weak, that she needs a man, that she doesn't wear the pants in the family, that she needs a leader, a strong leader to guide her. She needs a man to protect her. You know, and if, and if the majority of you guys watch it, you know, watching this video you know because there's not women who watch my videos so I'm, I'm gonna speak to the men here you know I want you guys not to fall into this same line of thinking that this woman did you know that these women are don't fall into the thinking and think that you're so strong and independent that you don't need God you know we need God we need to study the laws of the Bible and obey them because we're weak we don't know what's best for us you know and, and we're going to fall short sometimes because our flesh is weak. But, you know, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16 says, For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. 
but the wicked shall fall into mischief. You know, if you're a just man, you'll fall, but you'll get back up and you'll keep trying and you'll keep pressing on and you keep doing the right thing. So even though we fall sometimes, we have to get back up and remind ourselves that, yeah, we're weak. And the more we fall, the more we need to pray, the more often we need to pray, the more time we need to spend reading our Bible, the more, the more we need to attend church. That's how we get stronger. But you're never going to get strong if you don't realize and admit that you're weak. Just like, these, just like the woman that I love. You know, my doors are always open to her. But she's too filled with pride to admit it. You know, she's too proud to admit that she needs me, that she's weak. And I don't want you guys to destroy and waste your lives. You know, whatever point you're at in your life, whatever you've done in your life so far, you know, you, you can still impress the Lord. He still wants you back. His doors are, his arms are still wide open for you. You know, the Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward, uh, toward us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. You know, as long as you still have breath in your lungs, God wants you to be with him. He wants you to do the right thing. He wants you to come to him and tell him that you need him, that you're weak without him. You know, a lot of MGTOWN men say, oh, uh, uh, say, oh, well, when the woman comes crying back to me, I'm going to laugh in her face and turn her away. You know, if, if you reject people in this life, you know, God can treat you how you treat others. So I, I want to warn you about that. And also, I want to know, I want you to know that if you reject God your whole life, He's going to reject you in the next life. He will laugh at you for all eternity. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 33, says, Whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father in heaven. You don't want to deny Jesus Christ in this life because he will deny you in the next life. So right now, while you're still alive, while you still have breath in your lungs, you have a choice. You could admit you're weak. You can tell God and go humbly before the Lord and he, and he will accept you. At whatever point you're out in your life, whatever you've done, he will accept you back. God is not like men. You know, sometimes men are impatient. You know, we're not long suffering like the Lord. We're not forgiving like the Lord, you know. Some, he doesn't hold a grudge like a man would, you know. Some men, their hearts turn to stone. And there's no more forgiveness left in him. And they harden their hearts. But God, he wants all of us to come to him. Whatever sin you're involved with, you can forsake it right now. Just choose today and say, I'm weak. I want to forsake this sin. So we can sit here and say to all these women that, that, are, that they're never going to turn from their wicked ways. They're never going to come back and admit that they were wrong. But, you know, okay. Let them destroy themselves. You know, Proverbs 16 verse 18 says, Pride goeth before destruction and on a haughty spirit before a fall. You know, so if they want to lift themselves up and be all proud, they'll, they'll destroy themselves. Their pride will destroy them. But don't go down with them. You don't have to go down just because they're living a life of sin. And maybe they're getting what they want right now. Maybe they're living it up. Okay? But they won't have the last laugh. Because on judgment day, they'll be weeping. They'll be crying. They'll be so ashamed of themselves for having not turned to the Lord. And that's the day that you are going to want to be standing before the Lord with your head high, held high. Yeah, you didn't get treated good here in this life. But when God the Father opens the doors of heaven to you, and He tells you, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. That's when you're going to be redeemed. That's when justice is going to be served. You know, so I just want to encourage you guys to be strong. And remind you that the way to become strong is to first become weak. And admit and acknowledge you are weak. Bible says in the end, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. So you don't need to have the last word right now. You don't need to have the last word. You don't need to be so passionate about calling these women out for their whor whorish ways. You know, just keep yourself pure and eventually you'll get the last word. 
God will get the last word. God will fight for us. He'll knock these women off their pedestal soon enough and put them where they need to be. The Bible says that this life is but a vapor. It, vanished, it, it, it appeared for a moment and then vanisheth away. You know, the day is coming when, when all will bow before the Lord. Every knee shall bow, the Bible says. In uh, uh, Romans uh, 14, verse 11, uh, it says, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to God. You know, so that's my video. I'm going to close with a reading um, from the book of Proverbs, the book of Wisdom, chapter 1. Um, but I want to leave you guys first with a challenge. I want to challenge you to, to dig deep within yourself. Dig deep and, and identify your weaknesses. Which commandments do you struggle with? You know, if there's a particular sin that you're struggling with, or something in your life, you know, send me a private message. Send me an anonymous message and, you know, and I'll create a video and I'll try to help you, you know. I'll try to put something together for you because I, I care about you guys. I care about you. I want to see you succeed. I want to see you get stronger because we all need each other. You know, I, I'm weak just like you guys. We all have to help each other stay awake or we're going to fall asleep. Just like the dis disciples fell asleep on Jesus, you know, we have to help each other because our flesh is weak. So, you guys be good, you know, and I'll be praying for each and every one of my subscribers. Every one of you guys will be praying for you. God bless you. I'm going to let the Lord have the last word. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22 through verse 33. The Bible reads, How long, ye simple ones, will you, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and you have refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But you have set at naught all my counsel and would none of my, none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as destruction, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall you call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hateth knowledge, for, for that they hateth knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. They would none of my counsel, they despise my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way, and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall they shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso, but whoso hearkeneth, hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Amen.